It should have been an easy task for them. Taking over a backwater species that's barely even reached its own orbit? No FTL, no defense satellites or stations that they could see. Only a primitive military inside their own atmosphere. And with no seemingly orbital defense, that meant the invasion ship could be safe from any type of retaliation. The only issue that they would have was a very, very dense gravimetric interference that made it near impossible to give accurate orbital fire support. Before they began their landings, the invaders received a coded message from another species they knew, the ones the human call the Greys. Oddly enough, this message was in text only. This was odd, since it's usually a lot more flamboyant, but they read it anyway. The message read, We know you are about to invade. We strongly suggest you reconsider and simply leave. The Dokok thought this was a joke and had a good hearty laugh at this, so much so that they actually had to calm themselves so they could actually orientate the ship. After all, what could a simple species like these strange, I don't know, apes do? Three weeks later, the Dokok High Command looked over the very sparse information from the invasion ship before it had crashed. With everything from the landings taking horrific casualties to the loss of their invasion ship itself, everything was just confusing. They had seemingly lost their invasion ship to incoming ordnance that seemed to saturate their scanners, yet they couldn't tell what was actually a target and what wasn't. The point defenses did do their job, but again, they didn't know what to shoot at. And because of this, a single piece of ordnance was able to trick the sensors and get all the way through. The ordnance, using chemical propellant, was somehow able to pierce through multiple decks before exploding when it did. More than half of the atmosphere was blown out into space as the ship rocked violently from side to side. Along with that, almost half of the crew and multiple conduits were damaged well beyond recovery. It didn't take long to order an abandon of the ship. Though they did realize that it was a hostile planet before they went down, they realized they would have to try to aim for the same location as their invasion marines. They knew this area was easy to find. The area itself was chosen for planet fall and was selected due to its being one of the smaller continents, meaning that it should have a lower population and be easier to beat. Then it is also still connected to at least one more continent by a very, very slim piece of landmass. This should, in theory, limit the population that they would face right off the bat so they can get a correct foothold and also allowing the invaders to expand beyond and continue via ground. This is important since it takes care of much of the logistics as they no longer are requiring the shuttles and corvettes to bring supplies, they could just get their own. Along with this, the center of this continent was very flat terrain, which made it easy to land on. Along with that, there seemed to be an impassable continental divide to the west, which made sure that their flank was covered. It should have been simple, yet the invasion force had not sent any other messages in two weeks, as the High Command tried to figure out how all this happened. Even when they sent scouting ships, they stayed away from that continent, but they were still blasted as they passed over the northern continent over to the east and could barely get past its western shores before completely going dark. This would only happen if they had been shot down. When they kept searching all the pieces that they had, they finally stumbled across the video that would answer their questions on how and why. The main invasion force was moving its way east from the center of the continent and wanted to secure an area all the way to the main water tributary. Once they do that, they can actually secure a foothold big enough to bring even more supplies down. What appears to be a helmet camera showed a leader trying to push their own people further into the city they were coming up. 
as they looked at the video, pausing it every once in a while, they could see that most of the large buildings had already been broken or were leaning crooked or occasionally actually falling in the background of the video. This should have actually disheartened the locals like it did on so many other planets, but this only seemed to infuriate the locals as they seemed to get more and more agitated, screaming out in different languages something that was again odd, but they didn't know. The only thing the translator said was expletive, expletive, expletive. Your mother kisses expletive. You suck expletive. All this was odd, so they simply continued to watch the video. As the two forces clash as the Dokak enter the city, the leader whose camera they were watching was constantly pushing his marines forward as much as he could, trying to use good old-fashioned blitzkrieg tactics to try and break the locals' will. They did all their movements without any question, pushing into the streets, making sure they took over as much as possible. Yet it seemed quiet, at least for a moment. Suddenly, the locals came out of nowhere, every single crevice they seemed to crawl out of, jump out of, fire projectile weapons at their own cyclic rates. The invader's armor began to fail under all the pressure of all the impacts as the fighting became a complete melee, blood of both species began to spray across the land as blades, bullets, energy weapons all started to cut through anything they touched. The video even showed bone and entrailed hit in wet chunks as both sides seems to be out for destroying each other no matter the cost. To force the other side back, both sides began to drop explosives on the lines. The humans seemed to not care about the shrapnel, nor the explosions that were happening around them. That is when an explosion of artillery is seen, and the marine officer is thrown off to the side and hits the wall like a wet turd. All they saw for a moment before the crunch was the video spinning around so fast that they couldn't figure out what was going on. On the video, they could actually hear the bones break, and it was clear that the officer was on the ground struggling to breathe. They looked over to the side of the video, and it was clear for the readout that 31% of his bones were now broken, along with severe concussion, and he probably just soiled himself from the impact. As the officer looked to the sky, he looked up, and they could see the remnants of the invasion trip burning in as it tumbles through the atmosphere, its massive hull glowing as the atmosphere tears at the exterior, heating it up into molten slag, its almost nearly complete, uncontrolled descent sending it to the ground. Looking close at it, they can see small explosions as the few pressurized compartments that are still there heat up to critical mass and explode outside the ship. The camera then starts to move around a little as the marine looks around left, right, up, but very slowly, groaning with every movement. Then he sees his weapon and he begins to crawl over to it. He begins groaning and just about screaming as the broken limbs do not want to listen to his commands. Even the exosuit is malfunctioning which makes it just a massive weight on his body, making his crawl even that more difficult. As he crawls over, he reaches over with his non-broken arm to reach for his weapon, and suddenly a large boot lands on his hand, causing another bone or two to break, as you could hear it from the recording. The camera then looks up to see a human looking down at them. The biped has a piece. Looking close, you could see multiple pieces of metal sticking into its torso. Blood is oozing from the side of its leg as a very large foreign piece of debris is sticking out of it, beginning to make his pants turn into a different color. One of his arms is actually missing two-thirds of the way down from the shoulder, yet it still stands there. And as the camera pans up even higher, they can see that one of the eyes seems to have been exploded from the head, yet it still looked down at the officer with just a blank expression. Nothing on it. This human looked down at the officer, 
and then seemed to notice the recording device. It looked straight at it and then spoke. You don't seem to understand. Earth is not yours to conquer. He then raised the projectile weapon in its still-functioning arm, pointed it at the Marine, and the shot rang out into the camera's speaker, flipping it back for a moment as though it was looking back to the sky, and then suddenly slamming forward onto the ground, breaking the camera. The recording itself was immediately uploaded and sent, lost in all the extra data until now. The High Command was just horrified beyond words at what they had just seen. They didn't even look at each other for a full minute before beginning to look at each other with eyes that simply stated, Okay? That is when a message arrived. A simple text message that read, We did warn you. This simple message made them all wonder what the hell kind of demons live on that death world. Hello everybody, this is Syntax. Thank you so much for joining me on today's story. Before I go, I need to say two things. First things first, this story was actually recommended by someone on the live stream that we do every Wednesday at 6.30. So thank you very much for your suggestion. I also need to send out a giant thank you to one of my supporters. You all know him. You all love him. It is the SS Demon. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. And everybody else, I will see you on the next one. This is Syntext, ejecting.